What's going on guys? I got Pradeep on the line, the CEO of Solve Care. I've got some really good questions for him today. I'm really looking forward to this interview. Pradeep, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate your time, man. How are you doing today? I am fantastic, excited to be here, and thank you for this high energy interview. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely, absolutely, man. It's a pleasure to have you on the channel. So if I can start off with uh, my first question here, Pradeep, introduce yourself. Who are you essentially? What is your story, your background? Just for everyone watching here to understand who you are. Well, I'm a first and foremost a parent. I have two great kids. I'm a son of an amazing set of parents as well. I'm a healthcare executive. I have been in healthcare all my life, out of straight out of college, uh, and I've played a lot of roles in healthcare. I've run uh, the IT departments of big insurance companies as their CIO. I've built many health tech companies. I've worked for two presidential initiatives in healthcare, Bush and Obama, especially the Obama Care Act. I've worked on uh, big public programs, Medicare, Medicaid, SNAP, TANF, CHIP, Children Health Insurance, you name it, all the big systems that Americans rely upon, I've been part of them. I've worked with many governments outside the US in advisory role or helping them figure out how to build better health systems. So healthcare is in my blood, right? And that's all I've done all my life is to be a parent, a, a, a teacher, an IT exec, a, a pro, public program exec. And it's been 30 years. Uh, I entered healthcare in 1991. So it's been more than 30 years now. And uh, I think I've seen every angle of healthcare there is to be seen other than to do surgery. I don't do surgery. Okay. Everything you know else I have been part of in one way or the other in a very meaningful way. Nice, nice. Well, I got to say, Pradeep, you have quite the credentials, man. And for someone with your credentials and background, being involved in such a high profile project, it makes me feel very, very comfortable when exploring your project and kind of wanting to learn more about it and pitching it to everyone that's watching as well, right? Um, we're always looking for high quality projects here. And I definitely want to say yours fits that profile. Well, thank you. And it is a challenging project. I mean, I started SolveCare six years ago and my mission was that I want to make a difference in healthcare that I have been unable to do for the previous 25 years. Uh, so to put things in perspective, you know, I have personally overseen IT spend in healthcare in the billions, not millions, but billions. I've seen and bought big systems, eligibility, enrollment, payment, adjudication, disease management, care coordination, coordination of benefits, you name it, I've done it. And as a CIO, I've written big checks, but I've never been able to say to myself, hey, what I'm doing is actually helping my mom or my grandma or my kids actually get better care. So having seen it all and done it all, I started to ask the question, what is going to be my impact on healthcare on, in the world and healthcare? And I fundamentally came to the conclusion that we are not leaving the next generation a good model, that we have created lots of barriers in the name of efficiency and utilization management and revenue cycle management, fancy words we love to use in healthcare, but everything we do actually erects another barrier. Oh, you can't go see this doctor. Oh no, you can't go see the specialist without my approval. Oh no, you can't, you gotta pay more copay. Oh no, you can't buy a uh, brand name drug. You gotta buy a generic. You know, everything we've done in healthcare for the last 30, 40 years is to erect more barriers. And I said to myself one day, especially when my son needed healthcare and I was experiencing healthcare as a parent, that this is not the world we wanna leave for the next generation because you deserve better. So I said to myself, you know, there are real fundamental problems in healthcare and a big problem in healthcare are these silos, silos of data, silos of care access, silos of payment. It's not just data, it's the whole infrastructure is designed to be these siloed networks and they don't talk to each other and you gotta be in the right network to get the right care. And if you're unlucky to be in the wrong network, well, sorry, but suffer, that's wrong. And people suffer from this all day long. My family does too. So at the end of the day, the, the mission was to do something fundamentally different. So six years ago, I started Solve Care with the idea that we're going to do the very, very, very hard thing. And we're going to reimagine healthcare computing infrastructure, which is without silos, where it's open, it's secure, it's permissionless, it's trusted, but it is not controlled by one party. And it's going to be available to everybody, the patient, the doctor, the pharmacy, the lab, 
the insurance company, the employer, the government, the hospital, the, 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 anybody who is involved in your and my healthcare should be able to use the same infrastructure because they can trust it and because nobody's benefiting from this infrastructure inappropriately. So that's the mission. It's a huge one. It's a tough one. It is not, you know, simple token swapping or yield swapping or staking. It's a way harder problem we are solving. But I'm really excited. We are where six years later, where I can truthfully say that I have, the team has largely achieved the vision. It was not an easy road, but man, we are very excited. We are where we needed to be. That's great to hear. That's great to hear, Pradeep. Now, I think that you've you've answered my next question a lot within within that explanation there. So thank you very much. But let me let me just ask it anyway. And I mean, if there's something that you want to add to your answer or add to what you were just saying there, um, absolutely feel free. So my my next question for you is, what exactly is Solve Care? But I mean, you've you've explained that largely in in your previous response. But was there anything that you wanted to add to that as well? Yeah, self care is a lot of things, but fundamentally, we are like the salesforce.com of healthcare. So we are a platform on which the enterprise, be it the hospital or the pharmacy network or the doctor or the doctor, uh, the, or the group of doctors, anybody who needs to deliver healthcare to patients can build digital health solutions in a very quick, fast and efficient way. And then on the flip side, any healthcare consumer anywhere in the world can access our platform to, to act, get access to quality content, to get access to care, to be able to make payments, to be able to manage their data, and to be able to do safe and secure communication with parties they need to talk to inside a care delivery protocol. So, and all of this is built on something called proof of competence where you and I can interact on our chain. And all I need to know to interact with you is that you are a qualified doctor, but I don't need to know anything more about you. And all you need to know about me is that I'm a patient looking for a certain type of care. Let's say uh, I'm interested in managing my diabetes. And we can interact with each other using that knowledge of need, but we don't need to share our identity with each other till we really need to do so. so we have created a zero knowledge data identity business logic transaction execution and payment capability where we can know about each other but we don't need to know each other and that becomes really important when you're talking about connecting any patient in the world to every doctor in the world and the only way you can do that is if you implement this open infrastructure like ours so it's basically, you know, people use blockchain to interact and transact with each other. We are using blockchain to connect patient, doctor, pharmacy, lab, insurance company in a way that everybody is protected. Nobody gets to write the rules arbitrarily. And surprisingly, it's actually good for business. It actually reduces the liability from an insurance point of view. It actually makes the hospital be more efficient it actually makes the patient more engaged. It actually makes the doctor happier because they don't have to waste their time doing a ton of bureaucratic stuff. So the idea of Care Chain, which is the core product of Solve Care, and the Solve Care platform, which is called Care Platform. So we have Care Chain and Care Platform. And the combination of those two lets you basically address any healthcare scenario you can imagine. So okay. that's what we've been working on is to really put in a new foundation for healthcare computation, transaction, identity, and asset management, and make it available to everyone, and put it on a decentralized platform so we don't control things. Only the parties who use it control their respective nodes and their respective data, but they don't need to worry about what is any big brother standing in the room, you know, doing things to benefit from you talking to your doctor inappropriately. There is no such you know, profiteer in the middle. Right. So that's the idea. And it's starting to work really well because we are starting to see major hospitals, US and worldwide, 
lots of individual practitioners, physicians, pharmacists starting to adopt the chain and the platform. So we are more than a chain, but we are fundamentally a chain with a whole lot of functionality layered on top of the chain to let you do pretty much any healthcare you know, system you want to build on our platform. Very interesting. Very interesting. I got to say that that explanation gives me a really good grasp on what you guys are all about. And um, it kind of leads me to my next question as well. So can you talk a little bit about the launch of CareChain? You had mentioned CareChain and, and what brings it to the blockchain industry um, playing its part within the solve care ecosystem per se. I tell you a funny story about blockchain. So when I left you know, my corporate um, role and I came to start SolveCare. Of course, my colleagues are, you know, insurance company CIOs, or government program administrators, you know, DC and New York and all the, the big players in healthcare. So I said, I'm gonna use blockchain to build this open healthcare fabric. We need to break all the silos down. And they said, what happened to you? You used to be one of us. And now you are playing with a bunch of crazies, right? These what is this blockchain, Bitcoin, and all these uh, things that are going on, and there's a bunch of scammers, and what happened to you? How did you go from running insurance companies to running software? And I said, because if you look beyond the, the noise, blockchain represents a first true opportunity in a hundred years to fix healthcare. And everybody in blockchain is using it to do something else, whatever they think is appropriate, but nobody even understands healthcare enough to figure out how to use blockchain the right way. And I think I understand how, what the real value of blockchain is gonna be, but it's gonna take a few years for people to catch up. But I'm gonna do it now because it will take years for us to build what people ultimately realize they need. And this is gonna be like an iPhone movement. You never knew you needed an iPhone till you saw one. Then you couldn't live without it. <laughs> but there was a world before it, right? Yes. We used to have you know, touch phones and flip screens and little crazy, you know, multi-punch keypads. And I mean, who remembers that stuff? But it, we, we, that was our world. And nobody knew that iPhone needed to exist till it existed. So you got to see beyond the obvious and you got to look at where the world needs to go and then find a way to get there. It's like the Wayne Gretzky thing, right? Skate to where the puck is going. Right. So we started to skate to where the puck needed to go. Right. Figuring that might take even 10 years to do it. But then came COVID and then COVID accelerated the adoption of digital health and suddenly it became cool to do, you know, healthcare online versus being in the face of the doctor. And it accelerated our roadmap by, you know, I think three, four years. So what we thought would take 10 is now is achievable at six, which is wonderful. Yeah. But we are the first in the market because we've been working in it for so long. And the other thing I'll tell you is that when I started in uh, uh, SolveCare, you know, I understood from the beginning that trying to put all healthcare data on blockchain is a bad idea because healthcare data is protected and healthcare data needs to be used with consent. So blockchain is a consentless model. So you can use the blockchain to manage healthcare, but you can use it to publish healthcare data because it's not gonna fly. You can not just publish healthcare data on a chain. You will lose all ability to control, monetize, or even protect it. And the law is gonna be against it for even if I publish the data, if you use it, you're gonna get in trouble. So that's not gonna fly. So I focused on using blockchain as a consent layer, as an event layer, as a transaction layer, as an identity layer, as a payment layer, but not as a data layer. So that's what we did. And then we built everything else that was needed for healthcare to work, right? So that brings us to where we are today. What are we, you know, how did we get into blockchain? Because there is no other way that I know of today that I can build a system that parties who don't trust me can trust that system. There is no other way. I could build any system like what software has today in the centralized cloud and Amazon, but then I would own the keys to the Amazon cloud. My Amazon account would have control over that system and I would have godlike powers. And there is not an insurance company or a hospital in the world who will say, oh, Pradeep's a nice guy, let's go and buy his system. That's the same problem we have today. That's just another silo. So we had to build a system that you could trust without having to trust me. And you could use even if I'm not around. 
Yes. So that's why blockchain was uh, adopted by my team. We didn't come to blockchain looking for a solution. I was building a decentralized healthcare platform that everybody could trust. And then I realized blockchain is the way I'm going to gain that trust. If I manage identity, transaction, a transaction state, payment, uh, and uh, consent on it, then people can trust the system because there's nothing to hide. Right. So that's how we started and that's how we've been using it. So, you know, there were a lot of blockchain projects that said, you know, we're going to put data on the blockchain. That's going to solve all problems. I said, we're going to put everything but data on the blockchain and that's going to fix the real healthcare problems. <laughs> clever, very clever, very clever. I like, I like the way you think Pradeep. It's, uh, it's very intellectual. And I, I think, I think you have a lot of great ideas for this. Um, that being said, how does CareChain implement the zero knowledge proofs? Oh, that's a really, really exciting innovation. I've been working on it for years and we have reached a point where we can truly bring it to market. So it's actually zero knowledge transactions that touch everything. So what is a transaction between you and I? It's where we need to do something where you need to exchange information, we need to communicate, we need to know who you are, you need to know who I am. We need to agree upon some rules of engagement. Uh, what you're going to do for me, what I'm going to do for you. And there's going to be some payment from you to me or me to you. And there's going to be some auditability that we did our job. That's a transaction. So what we built is care chain to allow for any to any transaction between two parties without where they can trust each other's competence, but they don't need to, tr to share each other's identity. So let me give you a simple example. Let's say that you are in New York City and you are and you want to make an appointment with a dentist, okay? You have a choice. You can go to Google and randomly pick a name or a number from the you know, yellow pages and start dialing. But what if you could broadcast on your chain, on our chain, a simple card saying, Nick is looking for a dentist appointment in the next 72 hours. And you're going to put maybe some information about the problem you have. Maybe you need a, a cleaning. But you don't want that information to be shown to non-dentists. Right? Right. So how do you broadcast an event like that? How do you send out a request to the world where you don't know Pradeep's identity, but you need to know Pradeep is a competent dentist. So what we build is we built this capability where we said, we can have proof of competency on the chain without exposing the proof, the identity on the chain. So when Nick's card is published on the chain, it can be linked to that, that proof of competence saying only competent dentists can see my request, my event. That event can be validated on every node, on every node on the chain. That's not the problem. But the data on that event should be seen only by dentists. So a competent dentist is allowed to see your request. And this is really important because if you get into something more serious like diabetes, cancer, mental health, even prescriptions, you got to make sure that the party who sees your information is competent and capable and has a reason to see your data or your request. And they're the only parties you want to have a relationship with. You probably don't care about the Uber driver who on the chain because they're not competent to look at your information. So we built a zero knowledge transaction capability where you can allow people to transact the full life cycle of a transaction from initiation to payment without revealing more identity than you need to. And if you do that, you achieve total compliance with every patient privacy law in the world. The funny part about healthcare is everybody in healthcare talks about regulatory issues and data security and patient privacy, but they all do it wrong. They first collect everybody's data, then they try to put the, you know, a, a cage around the data and try to protect it. But why do you even have my data? If you can't protect what you don't have, you don't need to protect what you don't have. So compliance is upside down in healthcare. Every single IT system in the world for healthcare is built upside down. It's like a pyramid sitting on its nose. Because the moment we aggregate people's data, we have to protect it. We always screw it up. Somebody's gonna breach into that data. Somebody's gonna misuse it. Then we have to run around and prove that nobody intended to misuse it. Why are we doing that? Why do we not let you keep your data? I will only ask for data for as long as I need it to give you service that you need and we move on. So philosophically, the healthcare system, IT systems are broken. The other thing that's fundamentally broken with healthcare IT is that you send data blindly to systems, hoping the systems are fair and equitable. When you connect to a hospital system and you, sh you load your medical record there, do you know what the system does with the medical record? No, you don't. 
all you know is that the system is in the hands of a competent hospital, so hopefully they're not doing anything bad with my data, but if they did, you won't know about it. Which is why government writes all these crazy rules to protect you. But first thing we're doing is taking away your asset, your data, and then giving to them and hoping they'll protect it, which is upside down. So what if we actually didn't have you send the data to me? And what if I send my logic to you? So what if you could actually get a card from me on the chain, which would let you book an appointment like Calendly, right? And that card could check your all your information and make an assessment and say, oh, Nick needs to come in for a cleaning. Instead of you sending in all your history, why don't we send the logic to your data and let the data sit with you and then logic comes to you, it interacts with your data, it tells you what to do and we are done. So healthcare will look infinitely better if we stop moving data around and we start moving logic around. And that's what care chicken does. In your perspective, where do you see the real world utility in the blockchain? Which role is CareChain going to be playing within that? So we are a layer two chain, right? So our, we are a healthcare centric layer two chain. And in the sense that we have no different than Polygon and Matic. You know, Polygon for us is CareChain and Matic for us is Sol. Or any other layer two, doesn't matter. Okay. Right. But those chains are written with the idea of doing some very basic, you know, transaction and smart contracts. And those are not enough for healthcare. So we took that principle of a layer two chain, fast, cheap, bridge to Ethereum, you know, uh, your token works as your gas, uh, you can publish content on it as NFTs, all that is the same. You can do all that on CareChain. In fact, you could do everything you do on Polygon on CareChain, no problem. But then we layered in a lot more for healthcare. So we said, okay, how are we gonna do zero knowledge transactions? Let's build in zero knowledge interoperability, which we haven't talked about, but imagine where you have in the, on your chain, your in your wallet, when you connect to the chain, you can not only receive content from me, let's say as your doctor, but that content could, you could automatically have it interact with the pharmacy logic to see what, to have your drug shipped to you automatically. So in other words, I send you a prescription event and in your wallet is sitting a pharmacy card that picks up the prescription event, automatically tells you, hey Nick, what Pradeep wrote you as a prescription, I can fill for $72 and it's in the mail right now if you click yes. And the, the shipment is on its way. Oh, and by the way, the payment is automatically handled with a solve in your wallet. Imagine the experience that my mom or your mom would have. We would need, we would need all this insane, you know, healthcare bureaucracy that we have today. So zero knowledge interoperability where the pharmacy doesn't need to know the identity of the doctor or the patient. They only need to know that you received a valid prescription from a competent doctor and on that they can give you a price and give you a shipping option. And you don't need to share with the pharmacy anything more than that. And you can pay them in salt tokens. Your, your bank account doesn't need to be exposed or your card number doesn't need to be exposed. So this is our utopia. This is what we are trying to achieve is completely redefine healthcare processes where we don't need to tell them about everything about ourselves to get any service from healthcare. I don't really need to answer the name of my dog or the color of my daughter's eyes to get an appointment. You should know that I'm a certain age individual with certain healthcare needs and come see me. So we're going to restore dignity and power in the hands of patient and doctor. This is our mission and we are achieving that. So coming back to your question about care chain, care chain is a zero knowledge transaction, zero knowledge interoperability a, a dual-faced payment model which, which uh, allows you to make payment in both uh, fixed value and like a stable coin and variable value like a utility token. Let's you mint NFT. So if I'm a doctor and I am really good at, let's say, sleep apnea and I am spent 30 years treating patients with sleep apnea, I can monetize my expertise, publish their NFTs that people can download in their wallet and use it to manage sleep apnea and they can pay me per usage. And based on their wallet, I can even customize the NFT and rotate it around to give them a different advice based on age, gender, health condition. So I can write really clever NFTs on CareChain. So I have payments, I have identity, I have consent, I have um, uh, the uh, ability to, to uh, transact with you safely, and I can do this in a manner that I can demonstrate compliance. This is all that is needed for healthcare to be rethought. So again, you know, I'm talking about going where the puck needs to be rather than play where it is. So we have skated to the place where I think healthcare um, needs to go and it's starting to catch up.
Okay, great, great. So what do you think that the future of the Web3 technology holds? Is there any future for the utility tokens there and Solve token? So Solve is a multi-purpose token. It's a utility token, it's a payment token. It's obviously a community earnings token. It's the gas on the platform for every event. It's the validation revenue for a node, validator node. So it has a lot of very, it needed to be that way because pure utility token is a, you know, I'm a big believer in quantum physics. So I said to myself, what if the token could behave like quantum physics so you could have wave and matter form coexist? I could have solved in a utility model where it's fluctuating in the market and I could have solved as a fixed uh, payment stable coin during the duration of a payment but only for the duration of the payment and then it goes back to being utility what if we could invent a token like that it would really fix most of the healthcare payment bureaucracy uh, i used to build payment manage payment systems for blue cross and you know we used to spend tens of millions hundreds of millions just to make the payments you know, we paid our billions but we spent hundreds of millions making the billion dollar payment Nowhere else in the world do you spend 10% of the cost of a sweater to buy the sweater. But in healthcare, we can spend 20% of the cost of the sweater just to make the payment for the sweater. It's insane. Yeah. So I wanted to fix that total chaos. So, But it became much bigger over time. So Solve is a very multi-purpose token. It's built for healthcare. It's not a, it's an ERC20 token, but it's way more than a standard utility token with the way care chain treats Solve and the way Solve interacts with care chain. So the logic of solve and care chain combination that gives you a lot of capability but coming back to web 3 question i think web 3 is very important but i think web 3 again like blockchain needs to be deployed properly so right now we are in that you know abstract philosophical stage of web 3 where we are saying web 3 should be good for consumer if it's done right um, but i think in healthcare web 3 has very clear value from patient sovereignty from provider risk reduction, from improving the administrative cost for an insurance company or a government agency, reducing cost to citizens and society. Uh, Web3 offers very clear pathways. If we can decentralize all patient records, patients can then monetize them. They can share them and hopefully unshare them, which care chain lets you do. And Web3 will eventually catch up to that kind of a thing. You want to be able to have the ability uh, in a sense where I have a published need and you subscribe to my need versus me coming to you. So if I want a piece of my web as a patient, I can interact with any other doctor in the world and I shouldn't have barriers to choosing which pediatrician is best for my son. Uh, whether it's in US, Florida where I am or New York where you are or in Sweden where I found a better uh, you know, um, uh, neurologist for him. I should be able to as a patient publish my need and have doctors, hospitals, pharmacies, labs subscribe to that as a service provider and offer me opportunities to buy their service. So we need to flip the model and Web3 lets me do that. But Web3's principle is you or I own our piece of the web, our identity, our data, and our computing space, and our ability to interact or not interact with somebody. Instead of me sending data to you, you know, you come to me because I own my own web which is what I'm trying to do with CareChain fundamentally. So CareChain is, in, is sort of a built on the same philosophy as Web3, but it actually makes it work in healthcare. Web3 is still very conceptual. CareChain is very tangible. It's very usable today. So in many ways, CareChain is a blockchain Web3 confluence specifically for healthcare. I, do I think that Web3 is here to stay? Yes, but not in the current form. We believe Web3 should be implemented the way we have implemented it in healthcare in every other sector appropriately. But within healthcare, we think that Web3 has a real potential and the way we're implementing it in the form of a care chain, uh, that I think is um, going to have a great immediate impact. Of course, others will improve the idea over time. But what we have done, I think, is a way we're going to see patients really get empowered. What would you say, Pradeep, are the main three points that you would like our audience here to remember about care chain specifically? Um, and what 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 is the difference, I guess, that it's going to be making within the blockchain industry? So kind of, I guess, three takeaways that you would want people to take from this interview. The first is that there are a lot of blockchain solutions looking for problems. Care 
blockchain, on the other hand, is designed to solve a very specific and very important problem, which is to empower the patient provider interaction in a way that both parties are protected, secured, and can transact with each other without me and you looking over their shoulders. So that fundamental capability of connecting the patient and doctor in a way that's fair, equitable, and where patient does not have to give up all their rights to get any care. If we fix that issue, we fix healthcare fundamentally around the world, right? So that's what care chain is built to do from the ground up. It's not a chain we built, then look for a problem to solve. You know, you hear a lot about that. No, care chain is built to solve this issue of how does a patient doctor interaction be fair, equitable, correct, and, uh, and uh, produce the right results for both parties. Then you extend that. So that's principle number one. Care chain is fixing a fundamental healthcare inequity today where patient always has less power and less control over who and how and when they get care. We are trying to restore that. That's very fundamental. The second is care chain is much faster, cheaper, quicker to use and easier to use for every healthcare institution, healthcare entity, individual provider, you know, pharmacy, a lab, even a fam, you know, a grandma. Everybody has a, the ability to use care chain either as a validator or as a publisher, or as a reviewer or as a consumer. There are four roles. You can validate, you can become a validator on the care chain. You can become a publisher of healthcare content. You can become a reviewer of healthcare content um, and healthcare logic, and you can be a consumer, right? Right. And you as a consumer can consume and publish your needs. So it's not just you consume, you can also publish what you are looking for. So these four roles are designed with healthcare laws in mind. So we're not just solving some problem here. We are saying, how do we enable safe, secure, equitable and fair transactions between any to any party in healthcare? And how do we allow safe and secure and competent ba competence based content and service publishing and consumption? That solves all the issues. And the third fundamental issue that care chain is designed to, to solve is to help healthcare innovators really dream big and execute fast. So we have published care labs and care cards and care journeys in which you can reimagine any healthcare process. You can reimagine data collection, data monetization, device connectivity. We are doing a lot to make care chain salesforce.com of healthcare. And our goal is to make it easy, open and cheap for you to use. And our big claim to fame is that we have companies and entrepreneurs who are building their own healthcare solutions, startups, or even mature companies who are coming to care chain and saying, hey, I can do what I need to do, you know, at one tenth the cost and one tenth the time. And my, you know, VCs are asking me to get to market faster and care chain just accelerate my go to market connects. So it's a platform to innovate. It's a platform to connect. It's a platform to transact. It's a platform to innovate. And it's way cheaper than Amazon or hiring a bunch of engineers and starting from scratch. So it's cheap, it's fast, it's, um, it's fast time to market and it's relatively uh, low cost and you can innovate like uh, much, much more effectively on it. So in a, in a nutshell, yes, it's a layer two blockchain actually built for healthcare, but it's also built for healthcare innovation. And right. it's already driving a lot of innovation in healthcare as we speak. Right, right. Great. And Sol powers it all. Sorry, just wanted to say that Sol is sure. a pragmatic care chain. Yeah. For every, you know, minting, publishing, validating, consuming, interacting, transacting, um, you consume a little bit of Sol. Uh, but Sol as a as a token can serve as both as a gas, but also serve as a payment token, which you can then use to pay your doctor. So it has a lot of different value, uh, different roles in the chain, depending on what you want to do. Right. So combination of Sol, care chain and care platform, in our opinion, addresses most of the barriers to innovation and transformation of healthcare. Good. So my last question for you, Pradeep, why does the world need another layer two blockchain, would you say? Well, as um, I touched on that a little bit, so I'll summarize that. Layer two blockchains came out with the idea that they need to be faster, cheaper, easier than layer one blockchain like Ethereum. I mean, most layer two blockchains are EVM compatible. So yes, the, these layer two blockchains solve the fundamental issue of accelerating the transaction on the layer one. But that's not enough. If you're going to address real massive adoption, both by business and consumer, 
the layer two blockchain needs to deliver business applications. You can't just say, well, I can swap tokens or I can execute a smart contract and that's the purpose of my layer two. Yeah, you can do something fast, but it doesn't do much for me as a business or as a consumer. So that's not enough. So layer two blockchain needs to bring fast, cheap execution of what? Of not just smart contracts, but actually business logic, care management capabilities, competent published content. You need the care layer two chain to do something real. And what we did is we said, okay, layer two is about speed and low cost, but what layer two needs to do is, is what we're gonna redefine. So we redefined proof of competency chain where every validator, every publisher, every reviewer is known to have a competency, which means that you can trust their competency, such as the fact that, that you are a doctor. I don't need to know more about you other than the fact that you are, you are a competent physician. So every actor on the chain needs to be able to publish, consume, transact with other parties in a defined role. So care chain is a role-based, known role, unknown identity, and a complete application framework for doing so. So yeah, you can build smart contracts, but they're not good enough. We allow on care chain for you to build smart contracts with a very rich visual experience in the wallet. You can an experience that grandma can use to manage her healthcare, to make an appointment, to pay a, make a pay a bill or to fill a prescription. You can easily do that in the form of a smart contract. So CareChain gives you all of that. So in a nutshell, CareChain is layer two like many other layer twos. It has the best properties of layer two, but it also has some very unique uh, transactional and business logic capabilities. It can move business logic between wallets, not just transaction. And smart contracts that are linked to the cards when they move, can be validated to a role. So if I send you a card, but you're not a doctor, you can run that card. So it's a very powerful chain that addresses the real issues for that our kids or our parents deal with. And then actually enterprises like the ones I used to run, like an insurance company or a government agency can actually use to do something, right? So it's not, it's a, it's a chain that addresses healthcare capability, healthcare transaction and uh, uh, healthcare innovation. That's why care chain is very different. But yes, it's a layer two chain. It has all the layer two properties, but it has ton more properties than any other chain you have ever come across. Pradeep, you've, you've answered all of my questions today. And I gotta say, I'm in love with your project. It sounds so innovative. It sounds like it's gonna be bringing the future of technology and medical to the blockchain. And it's absolutely gonna change the world for lack of a better word here. So I wanna congratulate you guys on how far you've come already, your success, your dedication to the project. It really speaks wonders at the way that you've answered my questions here. And it just shows how educated you are on the topic and everything that's to be coming in the future and everything that we can look forward to. So I want to thank you again for your time, Pradeep. Thank you again for coming on the channel today. Was there anything that you wanted to leave us with? Well, first, thank you for having me, Nick. It's great to see you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on your uh, show. And uh, I know that your audience is very engaged and very knowledgeable. So certainly it's an honor to be here. And I think from my point of view, I would leave you with one message. You know, I truly believe that your generation and the one after you are going to make the world a better place. And it's our job to give you the opportunity and reduce the barriers that are in place today, be it geopolitical or be it economic. But in healthcare, I can help break down those barriers. So it's a privilege to be able to do something that in my mind is a legacy and that I think that will actually impact our kids, your kids and their kids in a very positive way. And we are, gonna use, we are using blockchain to make the difference that it claims to make in one of the most important industries in the world. So. It's truly a privilege to have this opportunity to do this and certainly a privilege to be here. So thank you. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you again and take care. You too. Thank you. enjoyed that video guys make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button if you're interested in seeing some more crypto reviews and exclusive international blockchain events we are the channel for that guys as you know thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video